treat a diverse number of conditions, including musculoskeletal, pediatrics, geriatrics, for stress, fitness, and uh, muscular, neuro, neuro, adult neurological conditions. And being told that several properties of water help facilitate therapy. It can resist, it can assist, and it can relax. I'm sure we are going to hear today experts elaborate benefits, the indications, the contraindications, and precautions of aquatic therapy. Personally, I would like to hear also about how we can best maintain infection control, which is such an important area in my practice as I deal with children of all ages. I'm hoping that they will also refer to motor learning or learning, that is transfer of what happens in water, beyond almost non-weight bearing, to, for example, gait to walking over land and in gravity environment. With this few words, I look forward for all the three talks. We have three speakers. I welcome Deepti, who's our first speaker, going to talk about the pediatric uh, aspect. Deepti Patil is a physical therapist for 16 years in private practice in Mumbai. She has many affiliations in pediatrics, and she is the only assistant lecturer for international aquatic training and fac faculty. I welcome you, Deepti. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Thank you, Aisha, for such a kind introduction. I would like to thank the SIP organizers as well as the Raju sir, the president of uh, SIP, for inviting me to present the present uh, to present on an aquatic therapy, which is very close to my heart. And uh, uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you all are doing good in this pandemic times. So, Asha, can I start pre with my presentation? Please share your screen. Absolutely. Okay. Share your screen. Yeah. Let's, let's start with the topic now. Okay. So, here today we are presenting the scope of Aquatic therapy part of it and she will be presenting the geriatric part of it. So, what is aquatic tool by a certified practitioner in bringing about therapeutic changes in an individual using the properties and hydrodynamic principles of water to maintain improve or restore body function uh, to overcome activity limit. Hello? Yeah, facilitate yeah, um, uh, participation to fulfill their roles. Yeah, uh, fulfill their roles independently in daily life to a maximum extent possible. So why we, uh, in water, why we choose all these activities? So in water, movement patterns that are typical may look graceful because weakness prevents sufficient resistance to gravity. Patients are unstable and slow, slow what, because water gives time to react and think. And they might be using a lot. They might not. They might use less manual support, and they water need less power to move with or without supportive air, utilizing their bodies. They have a larger ranges of movement. They experience high doses of information which helps them in mental alertness and all of us knows that it's like water because water is fun so let's understand some physical properties of water so viscosity it is the major of resistance of a fluid which is a being deformed by a shear the less Thing easier is the movement. So water is more viscous than oil and it is a more helps in isotonic muscle work. So moving water provides impedance. It will allow patient to lose or gives an opportunity for error corrections. It provides resistance to movement dependent on the weight and length of lever arm, which is a very important physical property of water. It helps in damping down involuntary movement and assists the reduction of swelling in lower limbs. The abdominal wall is supported, assisting breathing control, speech, and coughing. Cardiac preload is affected and needs to be considered in children with cardiac abnormalities. The increased work of breathing improves rest. 
metacentric effect. This is the this is the effect of a gravitational force and the buoyant force. These forces of um, these forces are unequal and aligned, and they allow the movement in one rotation. The rotation continues until these two forces comes in more comes in alignment asymmetrically. The top forces can be used increase load on a connective tissue. Head and trunk control is required to correct the rotation. Selective limb movement is facilitated in this process. Asymmetrical patients like in hemiplegics can achieve swimming in a straight line by balancing these two forces. Uh, turbulence, it occurs when an object moves in the water and the drag effect can be used to assist resist movement and allow the elongation of muscles. It provides resistance to improve strength, balance, and core stability. Flow principles are also used to increase resistance. Relative density, yes, it is the basis for a floating or a sinking. Uh, 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 water has a relative density approximately one. The person who has a relative density more than one can sink easily. Children like hypertonic children and the geriatric population who have a more of an adipose tissue can float very easily. Whereas the population from the adolescence to the middle age who have a more denser body structure can sink easily. So let's understand some benefits of aquatic therapy. It helps in improving building the strength and endurance. It helps, it, it helps in coordination and balance. It helps in enhancing aerobic capacity. It reduces stress and it helps in promoting relaxation at the body's functional level. There are other factors which are the sensory factors because pool offers a lot of a sensory and perceptual stimuli. The skin frictions which gives the adding effect, the adding effect to the damping down the sensory inputs, uh, damping, damping down this effect uh, and uh, it provides the sensory input. Water factors, the sympathetic nervous system is suppressed in water in Increased tone reduces, creating a window of opportunity to facilitate normal movement. The spine lengthens. The heart rate is lower, making fitness activities safe for most of the patients. Fitness is important uh, in a pediatric as well as the geriatric population. Only differently able child has a right to be fit and healthy. Reduced activity makes these children more vulnerable. The rise in the metabolic syndrome and the statistics. We as a physiotherapist are in a perfect position to address these needs. Water is an additional tool, allowing the freedom of a movement at times difficult to achieve on land. So let's consider some, let's understand some contraindications. Absolute or contraindication, which are a complete red flag, that those are uncontrolled seizures, vomiting, diarrhea. Shortness of a breath applications that means we can take these patients to the pool, but with precautions. Bladder and bowel incontinence, sensitivity to disinfectant chemicals, orthostatic hypertension, hydrophobia, open wounds with the occlusive dressings, acute illness, sensitivity to head. Whenever we are taking any person to the swimming pool for the for the therapeutic purpose or the recreational purpose there are some guidelines or uh, guidelines for a safe water environment and the following implementation should be done to carry out any of the therapeutic uh, aquatic procedure so drowning and injury prevention micro design and construction operation and management public education and implementation and role majors that need to be done, that need to be carried out properly which are ensuring constant circulation of water programming respirators to allow disinfectant levels to recover cleaning pool surroundings frequent inspections and the cleaning of all filters inspection of a physical conditions of the swimming pools and ensuring that staff are appropriately qualified qualified and competent uh, disinfectant were well, used in uh, used in the swimming pool. Mostly chlorine is wisely used pool water disinfectant uh, disinfection method. Other 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 disinfectants like bromine, ultraviolet and algicides are used, but they have uh, some hazardous effects. And chlorine is the stable even for a drinking water. Uh, the W to health guidelines, uh, guidelines G per liter would be fine. Uh, there are, we need to, whenever we are adding any of the disinfectant in the water, the pH 
plane should be maintained between 7.2 and 8. There are a risk associated with this infections. There are a WHO guidelines for a drinking water quality uh, can be used to screen for a potential risk arising from a disinfection from a swimming pools and the similar environment. So we need to carry, we need to follow these guidelines to maintain the infections. Uh, essential actions should be, uh, should be taken during your therapeutic programs that treatment including filtration and disinfection should be on a regular basis. A pool hydraulic should be cleaned by the pool maintenance person. Addition of a fresh water in a frequent interval should be there. Cleaning of all the area should be, um, should be done on a regular intervals. Ventilation of indoors pool should be maintained um, appropriately. References for infection control information are, are there. Okay, so there are now considering today's condition of COVID, there are some international guidelines that we can follow whenever we are starting our practices. So there are guidelines published by International Aquatic Therapy Faculty, which is recognized by WCPT um, in COVID times. Yes, we can follow the uh, follow the guidelines which we, we which we are supposed to follow on the land therapy. But considering aquatic therapy, we need to maintain the pool hygiene, cleaning and sanitization of equipment, equipment after the station should be compulsory and disposing all the best by biohazardous waste should be there and microbiome test of the water should be done weekly in the in the labs. Okay, now let's learn about the concepts in aquatic therapy. These are the five concepts in aquatic therapy. First is a 10 point program, Halloween therapy and now now recently it is known as a water specific therapy. The Halloween therapy is a uh, is um, uh, is invented by a James Macmillan in 1950. So in this uh, in this 10 point program, we follow the mental ad mental adjustment is the first step that we follow, and we end with the 10 uh, 10 pro 10 points, and the last point is a simple progression where the person learns swimming. Okay, so water specific therapy, it's again the adaptation of the person uh, person in the pool. So like in Introducing him in the pool environment by playing some games with him. This is a halibic therapy with the, the group session of all the cerebral palsy, palsy kids to engage them in a few games activities. This is a Badragas ring method. It is invented in a Badragas, which is a small town in Switzerland and um, uh, it called as advanced one at the neck, one at the pelvis and another at the ankle. We can use another floating objects or uh, to support the body parts. And um, the Badragas principles are um, are similar as the PNF principles. Uh, Aichi, uh, we have a Prachi over here today. She will be explaining more about Aichi and about parts as well. We have a Mr. Gianni sir, uh, who is a master in Watsu. He will be explaining more of the Watsu. Uh, aqua aerobics, yeah, this is done for the children. So we follow the dynamic system model where the movement system, which is associated with the person's um, health condition, his sensory perspective, his coordination, the task, what we have to, uh, what, uh, any skill, we have to vary, vary the environment according to the task plan for him. Uh, this ICF model of how water specific ther therapy is a related modifying muscle tone power and endurance, creating alignment and dissociation using the water spe specific therapy principles. Uh, activity like changing or maintaining body body basic basic body positions, walking short distances and a transferring an object, use of uh, arms, hands and legs, learning by imagination, development of a complex skill done in a 10 point program, participation like joining others in a games and activities and goal has to be always there has to be transition from water to land considering daily living activities. So let's discuss a few cases on that. So first case I'm speaking about this past Weakness in muscles, forehead control, mild subluxation at right hip. Activity, self care, it's carried by patient, participation, contextual, or environmental support from parents, and the personal is his positive reinforcement and completely dependent on mother. So, and in a neutral position with maintaining his alignment. Okay, so here, so GMS. 
C5 के वो हैज अ पुअर हेड कंट्रोल द पोजीशन ऑफ योर हैंड शुड बी ऑलवेज सपोर्टिंग हिज हेड एट द चिन एट द चिन एंड ऑलवेज ट्राई टू कीप कीप टेक हिम इन द स्पाइन पोस्चर सो दैट ही शुड नॉट ड्रॉप हिज हेड डाउन एंड सो स्वालो द स्वालो द वाटर योर अगेन आई गिव हिम अ सो गिव हिम अ हेड सपोर्ट जस्ट टू मेक हिम मेक हिम मूव वर्क ऑन हिज अपर एक्सट्रीमिटी टू रीच फॉर द बॉल and here he actually reached the ball and uh, and could able to hold the ball over here and throw it in the water so the evidence is for that head control of a children with the cp in gmfc5 after handling it so done by a banker team f and the mayor in 2014 there is another evidence to the aquatic intervention uh, this is another child who is a 15 year old adolescent spastic diplegia with gmfc3 he as well shows the hypertonia weakness in quadriceps glutes lanomal guide feed and energy expenditure he ambulates with walker some hand function while manipulating objects is difficult uh, he is able to play with his peer he is not able to play with his peers in the school garden and uh, always requires the caregiver support the parent and the uh, parent support is nice and the adaptations at home and school uh, are there accessibility is problem he is motivated and confident person he is goal setting on the land his smart goal on the land he should be able to walk with the cot cane in an erect posture with an appropriate gait pattern i did the aquatic therapy assessment as well for him in as vota and har Uh, so he is the he is the person he is the child actually or uh, he came to me uh, first day so he was like this he was a completely leaning on the walker and look at his center of gravity is completely anteriorly and anteriorly anteriorly placed so when i started his aquatic therapy he was in that posture when i took him in the water so i gave him this support that um, uh, that he should he should not uh, try to uh, try um, that he should not fall too much forward and the and the surface tension of the water is actually allowing him to be in that straight position so the moment he tries to put more weight forward on this ring he might go down but he is uh, at the same time he is experiencing the resistance of the water so and then uh, then then after a few sessions doing uh, some kind this the such kind of intervention with him i made him stand against the wall here he is uh, is nicely uh, he kept his body nicely aligned in this position uh, position here is abdominals are nicely working and here i am i'm working more of his eccentric control of the quadriceps using the resistance of water and here i made him walk with the noodle giving lot of a input a lot of the commands like the moving to the left and right side to improve his spatial awareness and i did not give this noodle uh, to hold him in, in front the, so that he should not go more forward and i was trying to change his cog uh, uh here okay and here he is walking independently in the water keeping his upper extremities uh, like this for balancing so here he is actually nicely controlling metacentric effect and uh, and balancing his body while walking in the water so here after the 30 sessions of aquatic therapy he is like this in this alignment and he is able to walk with the cot cane with the erect posture with more of a spatial awareness and with no fear so carry over effect on an aquatic based intervention in children with cerebral palsy there is uh, there is evidence done by samantha j balington and the rowena naido uh, there are other evidences which shows that the self esteem and a self safety through the up thrust point of a halivic in aquatic therapy for adults with disabilities it's a literature review uh, the effect of an halivic technique on a gait of a school age children with spastic cerebral palsy the swimming program effects on the gross motor function mental adjustment to the aquatic environment and a swimming skills in children with cerebral palsy uh, there is a evidence on a uh, spasticity as well which shows that impact of aquatic exercise program on a muscle tone in spastic children with cerebral palsy uh, done in university of science and technology giza is it Uh, uh this is a recent evidence just published on 23rd may 2020 which says that influence of uh, aquatic therapy in children and youth with cerebral palsy it's a qualitative case study so um so they say that aquatic therapy sessions were playful making the children feel happy relaxed calm as well as enabling them to participate in further activities for the uh, so 
uh, after listening to this, we all should uh, understand that uh, aquatic therapy is evidence-based clinical practice. So there are a literature done on the external evidences, expert opinion, and the patient references. The external evidence is based on a 13 studies done by a Pedro on a CP, muscular dystrophy, ADHD, AST. There are lots more studies I could mention over here. Uh, expert opinion says that the halibut is actually a fun therapy. It helps in improving balance, relationships and the mental state to emotional status of the patient a water scale improves confidence and impedance uh, done by a pilarski k 2006 and i would like to conclude my session by sharing one of the patient's opinion she says i swim once a week it is great to be able to move in water freely you should know that i always sit in the same position in my wheelchair i cannot change my body position myself in water i can I perceive my body differently. I can float with a bit of help. I can lift and hold my head. I can stand on my feet and even walk when I'm supported. I can lift my legs and kick. This is very normal for able-bodied people. But for me, this is special and good. Anyway, I am happy about it. I get more strength. The balance of my head increases and muscles and joint becomes less stiff. Written by Joyce. So thank you, thank you for patiently listening for my session. All the uh, and they become more stiff and sorry, Asha, I couldn't hear. Sorry, sorry, Asha, I couldn't hear. Now, okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, very hard. Okay, so I'm just asking you, how uh -huh. do you manage kids who have fear of water and they uh -huh. become more sick and they enter? Okay, uh, so as I mentioned in the Halivik 10 point program, uh, the, our first step when we start with aquatic therapy is always a mental adjustment of the child. So whenever we take any of the child in the water, it's always the first is adaptation of the water with the child. And then, and when we, whenever we are holding any child, they, they, most of the time they clench to our body, but then the water itself, it has some calming effect. So that helps them to calm down. We can give them a, some rhythmic movement in the water. We can, we can say a few rhymes with them and that helps them to calm down and they become better. And with time, yes, they enjoy the intervention, whatever we do in the water. Thank you, Vicky. I'll ask you the other questions at the end. Now I request Prachi. Prachi Shah, thank you so much. Prachi Shah thank Arora is a sports physiotherapist, has a practice in Mumbai. For the last many years, she has many trainings in aquatic manual therapy. And the most important thing is she's with the Indian swimming diving team and works with Olympian swimmers. I welcome you, Prachi, for your speech. How are you, Prachi? Hello ma'am, good evening. Thank you very much for introducing me to SIP as well as introducing me over the webinar and I, I will be glad to start with my uh, presentation. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, everyone. As I mentioned, I'm thankful to SIP and all members of SIP for inviting me to give my presentation for an aquatic therapy. And thank you, Dipti, for explaining about pediatrics and neurological conditions with the beautiful videos and the evidences. I will try my best to cover musculoskeletal conditions as well as the women's health, as well as in uh, sports conditions, how aquatic therapy has been proved to be useful and some of the properties, how we can do clinical implementation of them, as well as aquatic cupping therapy, which is very new too. So I start with the assessment. I do not fail to take my assessment. And with an assessment, I mentioned that every details of them are been taken, as well as the scans are been reported to understand whether what form of an exercises one need to go ahead with them and how the prognosis have to happen. Also, as uh, we work in a team. So we also mentioning about which water depth uh, is the patient taken into, what form of an exercise, what equipments, and how was the tolerance to that particular exercise. So that has everything been documented and it is working on the phases of one to six phases. 
which tells about the phase one where an assessment is taken along with the treatment to manage pain. Second, then we focus on muscle strength and muscle endurance. Third, then we focus on the cardiovascular conditioning with balance and coordination also, you know, criteria to focus on to more. Then goal related things or sports specific things have been taken. And in phase fifth, the transition of aquatic therapy is done, which happens in this different six orders, depending on speed, lever, whether you want uh, less resistance, whether you want higher resistance, on which depth is it been taken, and is a person in contact with that tool or no. So can we have a poll over here, the poll one? Uh, yes. So ground reaction forces on joints are higher on land or in water. And joint reaction forces are higher on land or in water. And we are waiting for the result, what they have to tell about it. Very good. So I am glad that many of them have answered that joint reaction forces are higher on land. But some of them have answered that joint reaction forces are higher in the water. Let's see. And ground reaction forces are higher in the water. I would rather say this property will clear. That the, so the buoyancy when a person is having is around let's say is an example of 200 pound and he's in a neck immersion so it is only 10 percent of the body weight feel to him as more as the depth goes the ground reaction force neglifies and that's a unique property of water which is this buoyancy and that's why a stress-free exercises can be done easily inside but when we come to bone density over here to understand pediatrics and geriatric population will always have easy or obesity where the bone density is less, they will find it easy to buy in themselves. But lean body mass, when it is more, they will find it difficult to suspend themselves freely. And hence, we require to give them the additional equipments which can help them to be buy in and can take an exercise very well. Similarly, like water temperature can be regulated and controlled. So in the heated water, the resistance will be much more less comparable to the cold water. So whenever you want to do a resistance training, you will be definitely choosing to go with a normal room temperature like an aquatic fitness exercise or a sports aquatic treatment. Likewise, even the density of an equipment will be varying. And the aquatic equipments are much lighter, but inside in the water, they'll be giving more resistance. And hence, this example can explain you with the aquatic gym can also be taken inside in the water and to do a training with the buy-in surface. So it was easy for me to do the exercise then on the land. And as Dipti had mentioned very well about the meta center, which works more. So if I move my hand uh, forward or backward, my body is going to go up and down. That's where the core contraction can be seen in the muscles working across. And turbulence, yes, it is very much important. So when you want that stretching or when you want a good range of motion to achieve, the assistant along with the jet flow can help. But when you want a resistance training, Against the jet flow, it will help you in strengthening. Similarly, the root property of concave and convex or a surface tension helps in building up the resistance. So if it, if a, it is, and even the lever system is going to work over here. So if it is suspended at the distally, then the surface tension is more, resistance will be more. And as well as in the concave, it is difficult to cut the water currents. So it is going to be more resistance up over there. So here I am doing, along with the, aquatic fan inside and moving it across. So that is where the resistance is going to be more for me. But now it's even this particular property of water is being used very well in surgical tapes which are waterproof. And now even the surgeries after post-surgery before removal of the sutures, it can also be taken in an aquatic therapy. 
utmost and very important property the hydrostatic pressure because it emits the pressure equally on your body and as much deep you go the hydrostatic pressure is going to be that much on your body so it has an equal proportion to your cardiovascular res system respiratory system renal effect by increasing its cardiac output and this is what a person wants when a person is injured he doesn't want to compromise on its cardiac output he doesn't want but he can't train because there is a lot of pain there is a lot of swelling and edema so this everything can be controlled inside in the water atmosphere without having pain so when we say that how does water help it helps in multi direction so example if i want to punch or slap someone it's very easy over the land if to do it but inside in the water even to run and cross or even to move it's difficult because the resistance that i get inside in the water in all directions is equal and this is all because of its water properties so even in the fibromyalgia cases we take inside in the water and it has shown a very good improvement i'll be sharing my evidences and references at the later of the slide and it helps in them so that their fascia is stretched very much the range of motion and flexibility is achieved and without having any forces which are completely acting more so i would rather say the pole one who have opted for grf is more inside in the water the answer will be no it's on land more and this forces are very much negligible inside in the water so benefits are multiple let's say and at one particular time you can achieve lot more of the benefit so the main properties the hydrostatic pressure resistance temperature and buoyancy are the main unique features of aquatic therapy that makes them different from the land therapy and this is how the progression is easy in achieving so when i wanted to improve my flexibility to achieve it's very easy a doctor if i try to stretch it outside it's difficult so here the buoyancy is helping me up now since we know that there are so many multiple benefits can it cause an injury definitely it can cause an injury if you are not paying attention to it very well or what your exercise you are programming after each particular exercise for example over here if i am bending my flexing my hands forward i won't be flexing my leg forward i'll be taking it behind because we need to maintain the neutral spine as well because it's a lot of resistance inside in the water and joint reaction forces are not negligible completely but they are definitely acting across less than the land similarly even in the other position over here you can use dumbbells noodles or your hands to do the free hand exercises but when you are using dumbbells or a resistive it's high resistance when you are pulling it down but if my feet will be together then i will be facing a balance disturbance and with, with the water there is always a balance challenging so when a balance disturbance is going to happen i'll be moving and i won't be able to target on the muscle so hence the wide base of support the center of gravity is also been taken care if i ask you to do it now stand up and do this on the land yes you will say i am crazy we'll just fall off so yes inside in the water again it's easy to do it because the water is supporting you and it can be done in various different depths the exercises in different positions the exercises so who all can go for aquatic therapy i would rather say everyone but we need to make sure that everyone you need to take care with the contraindications and precautions which were very well again explained by the priya over there so i'll proceed with the aquatic what she mentioned about aquatic fitness inside when a post kid it, with the obesity it's definitely we need to control it and hence it can be controlled in a good fashion by doing inside in the water the exercises which they really enjoy in doing it up across so if we see up over here he is also doing but without any stress on his joints and his abdominal fat is also again contracting very much so this is how an aquatic fitness has been taken and about treadmill now there are treadmills which are there outside also and there are treadmills which are inside in the water now here i had installed one of my treadmill inside in the water which is automatic and uh, it gives 21 km per hour as a maximum minimal as 1.5 we'll see the examples there are many researches the latest research before the lockdown which happened was done by riddhi and to check whether it was beneficial to do a reverse treadmill in osteoarthritis patient and to see the results and it was quite good so let's proceed with the case presentations here i would like to know can we go ahead with a poll too please so i would like to understand what do you think about joint reaction forces 
where they are higher in OKC or they are higher in CKC. With the answers, I'm, I'm very much sure that uh, very many, many things will be getting clear. I'm looking forward for this poll. So OKC, let's say as an example, is when you do a knee kick or knee extension, closed chain kinetic exercise when you squat, Related with the knee joint, I'm demo giving you an example. Of this and joint reaction forces are a hint is on your ligaments and on your tendon, soft tissues. Whoa, beautiful. Joint reaction forces are higher in OKC and uh, people have answered 38%, whether in CKC they have mentioned 63%. I would rather say joint reaction forces, the answer is are higher in open kinetic chain exercises because in, when closed kinetic chain exercises, the joint reaction force over there is divided equally to the proximal as well as distal joint. But in uh, when, when you say it's OKC joint, okay, that particular joint underwears a lot of tension and stress and shear forces so that the soft tissues have to work really hard. The tendons and capsules and ligaments have to work really hard. So now the doubt is good. We had a poll over here. So I can explain in this case study one, which was a total knee replacement, which was done. And there is a resistance loop, which is tied over here to do the strengthening exercise, although the water is giving a resistance, but an additional resistance was done. If I ask her to do it on the land, it was difficult, but inside in the water, we can see a good range of motion was also achieved. The joint reaction force happening on this particular joint outside on the land or inside in the water is going to be more comparable to the closed kinetic chain. And even she was very well doing. So the rehab happened easily and the prognosis was much faster. Likewise, in case study number two, she had um, L4, L5 uh, retrolysthesis along with a PID, as well as a year back, she had injured her right leg with an, an arthroscopy was done, left had a, again an accident. So a lot of imbalance was coming and she was obese also. And she had delivered a child a year before with a C-section. So in this case, we were focusing on all aspects of core strengthening, of reducing the obesity, strengthening the muscles, and as well as balance, so she doesn't have more often falls. In case study number three over here, with an aquatic therapy, it was beneficial. He has, he's a case of CTE, a very well-known pediatrician of India. He had suggested that, okay, we can go for an aquatic therapy and check whether he can be treated conservatively. And again, it proved to be beneficial up over here. And when the, these are the weights, aquatic weights and aquatic socks that he has put on to. These are two kgs in each leg. And we could proceed successfully. His goal was that he should be able to play cricket well so that he can start playing sports very well, good and without surgery. And that was good. Case study number four is with knee arthroscopy. She had underwent for her right leg and uh, she had a meniscal tear as well of grade two. But that meniscal tear, I'll just go. So, but with that meniscal tear, it was, it was, it was not taken. The meniscal tear, the meniscus was left inside and it was not done. The meniscectomy was not done, not even. And the doctor had suggested to undergo for a knee arthroscopy. So knee arthroscopy in, oh, sorry, knee arthroplasty, because she was not getting the full range also available. She had done physiotherapy uh, with an, another physiotherapist. She just came to us with a reference of aquatic therapy. And she did. So we can see she just completed the treadmill four directional, and um, she is. She also did 360 steps, and she came. And after 10 days rehab, today it was her test session, and we can see she's sweating already. How was your aquatic experience, Manisha? Uh, better than uh, land exercise, land physio exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, aqua exercise is the best for to uh, Better than land exercise, the aqua may result in 
And as we can see, see what she was going up the stairs and down the stairs with a good knee flexion also, that without any pain. Like in the case study number five, he had undergone a spinal cord injury and we were training him. He came to us that he should be able to walk on the beach independently. And that was like, okay, we are going to walk across with that goal. And without, so he came up to us with a walker. Here, we are asking him to stand in a particular position and in a squat position. If I ask you to be in a squat position for 10 minutes outside, you will definitely say that, okay, it's really difficult to continuously sustain. But inside in the water, it was fine over there. And we could make the goal achieved. Over here, she is having a Parkinson's. And her main objective was that she should be able to do kitchen activities very well. Her hands were shivering. So over here is the, again, with the resistance, with the concave convex fans, as well as the weights, we're focusing on the balance. So she doesn't have a risk of injury to fall or she will lose the balance. And she can do inside in the water because water is assisting as well as resisting. Here, he had a road traffic accident, being a fit into a fitness industry. The, he had come to us post-operative. So over here, we and doctor had advised for an osteotomy. So here we were trying to, and he also mentioned that if you can do conservatively, do it. But that was again a challenge to us that to join loading should happen so that uh, the bone density can increase as well as along with the medication. But what about the other characteristics? So we asked him to squat and then do it over the treadmill. Then this case study is of me. As you can see, I have a genetically flat back spine as well as a sacralization. But L and along with an L3, L4, L4, L5 was herniated disc. And I'm a trekker and I love to ride bikes, but I wanted to strengthen my core muscles very well. And on top of it, I had gone under went an accident and it was like ligament tear and meniscal tear, but I wanted to treat it conservatively. So I planned a mat, I made a mat for my own. And I started doing the aquatic exercises and now I'm all set and fine to go ahead with it. So even in this sports injury rehabilitation and in Paralympics, a lot of plyometric training, stage one, two, and three, and four, we actually proceed how the, concept, the, the six phases are there. Depending on them, we proceed ahead. So different equipments and different positions can be done inside. Now all equipments are available in India and very easily in Decathlon as well as on Amazon. When there was dumbbells which was not available easily, I did again a research on them for two years and I made my own dumbbell. So case study number nine, we have two more studies to go ahead. These are the, all the sports studies up over here. And here again, he's an international footballer. So a lot of balance. So it is not only aquatic, aquatic therapy as a training. We were doing a transition. After all, we are not amphibians. We have to transition ourselves. We live 99.99% on land. So there is always an anti-gravity muscles and we have to see to it that we should be able to function, function very well on the land. So even when the plyometrics training are taken, the stretching, everything land and aquatic both contributed to make sure that he can go to his sports as early as possible. As Ma'am mentioned that I am with Indian swimming team and Indian diving team and I'm very much thankful to Swimming Federation of India as well as my coaches and swimmers to allow me to do a study on them. So it was a swimmer shoulder where you get an injury, it's a shoulder impingement because of overuse injury cutting the water currents, which is really a resistance. And after doing an aquatic therapy, it was proved to be beneficial in all four strokes as well as in long distance swimmers and in sprinters. And they could actually achieve an extra fraction in the second. So there was another study with an ultra marathon race and it, he was the only one who was invited from India to do it. And this particular race was 135 miles and he had metatarsalgia, SI joint dysfunction along with shin splints, but we don't want to compromise on his vital capacity, on his cardiac vascular capacity and his muscle strength and everything. So we were doing the training inside in the water, which was make sure that he could and he did his race very well without having any strain or problem. So even for triathlons and spinning exercises, even the stepper exercises, aquatic exercises, even an altitude training can be taken when a person can swim inside in the water. If the hydrostatic pressure is above your head and the functioning of your vital capacity and the physiological effects is going to be much more.
So in strength and conditioning with aqua, it depends on the duration frequency. Once in a week to maximum thrice a week is sufficient because you need to also rest your muscles and make sure that the electrolyte imbalance doesn't happen. And more number of repetitions will help in increasing more muscle endurance. Likewise, the graded resistance, depending on equipment, proprioception is a very good enhance in closed chin exercises over here. And as well as a variety of the exercises can be done inside in the water with different X's and different plane. But you need to make sure that when you are sometimes you're taking exercises from outside, you need to make sure that you talk to them to understand the rate of positive exertion so that you are on a correct track so it's not that group or uh, if you can take group or you can take private sessions it can be done even with the sports club or with the at home the exercises or in an indoor pool and you can ask them over here if you see this waterfall is not for a recreation again it is helping me in give in doing the drain of a lymphatic fluid lymphatic drainage it happens very well so lymphedema patty has been treated very well up over here as well as the sprinklers which I have put are for there is definitely a ventilation but when the aquatic fitness exercise when they really go up high and so I want to calm them down their body system to calm them down so the blood pressure doesn't shoot up high there are some pools where the even cameras are been put it um, ahead of the swimming pool so that even there is a visual feedback which can be achieved there are pools of different variations starting from five lakhs to even a crore so it depends completely. But when at the end of an aquatic therapy, you need to make sure that your client or your patient understands and knows that it is, this is what is normal to feel and he should hydrate himself very much and not to forget to take an aquatic assessment and put a data entry, log entry for it particularly because the consent is taken, it will help. And when you put an entry and assessment, that is something which is going to help you to for your prognosis also, to guidelines your exercise, also to make sure that what was happening wrong or what was happening correct and then you want to proceed in which particular direction. So safety, with you need to make sure that you hydrate yourself well and you can for your ear infections you can also ask them to avoid the to avoid ear infections these are the drops which are put after the water therapy and these are the drops which are put before the water therapy instead of using oil and different lotions they can all use one aqua lotion and making sure that you dry yourself very well so to avoid any kind of a urinary tract infections and the important important thing is that you speak to your therapist as well as you speak to your patients about it what do you feel to understand them? Because aquatic exercises are new, as ma'am told us, that it is something new which has come there. But it has been practiced from old, and now the awareness is spreading by Aquathon, by Watsu Week, and a lot of lot of people are in coming into it. Even the all population are coming into it. Even the actors are, and everyone is enjoying. So I would like to share the Aquathon experience up over here. It is not necessary that you need to have an indoor pool or you need to have a treadmill for it. It can be also... <laughs> nice! You did an aquathon three hours and more minutes as well as with that treadmill. Yes. Can, you, can you share your experience here at the center? Okay, experience I must say. Uh, this was the first time for me but surely not the last time. Uh, I really feel good about what I did. It's not very tiring and at the same time I don't uh, feel you know, very stressed out with my body or I body or so I think it's a great experience. And I, this is something I will complement with my gymming, I think, in the future. Oh, wow. And how was the treadmill experience? The treadmill was very good. Uh, I was usually thinking it's probably something I won't be able to sustain for long, but as time went along, I kind of did it uh, ahead. Uh, the balancing part was very critical, and I think uh, this is very different from the treadmill that it was going to be back. Because you have to balance yourself, so I think this is slightly better in that respect. And I'm excited to see how many calories I must have got in those treadmills. So it, it was an indoor experience, but even we can see over here an outdoor experience. When she was sharing, so some of How was it with you? Yeah, Renika, I thought I will just come for one hour, yeah. <laughs> but I survived and I could continue because it was really awesome and it was really good. I thought I will never be able to do it, but you made it. Yeah, and you came after a spine surgery. Yeah, spine. I had just six months start a spine surgery. After my retirement, I did all these things. Ah, nice! So there are even swimmers who are, have never tried the three hours of aquathon, and there are even non-swimmers who are there. 
and who says that yes, the, it is really helpful. So this is how the awareness is spreading. I maximally use a burden for method, but even a Vatragas ring method was used by me to do the aquatic therapy and something new, which is there is an aquatic cupping therapy. And aquatic cupping therapy is very much different from a water cupping therapy. Water cupping, it is done on the land and water is there inside in the cup. But in an aquatic therapy cupping, I was doing it under water. So because all the water properties were helping me over here with flexibility, with range, and as well as I could do a good mobilization inside over here to manage pain. And we could see the difference. She is, is just 38 years old and she was been asked to undergo a knee replacement surgery. But uh, then she went for a second opinion. The doctor had asked for an, okay, try an aquatic therapy. And we could see the difference with her kneecap, with the space, as well as the mobilization was easy for me to do inside in the water because I can hold her joint very easily inside. So yeah, aquatic cupping was, and I will be concluding as the team had mentioned about the IG. So IG is not always only for geriatric population, but even many young population are doing it for balance, for improving the core strength, for improving the vital capacity. It's very difficult to do it on the land and to ask you to balance with your eyes closed. And to, so this is how the proprioception is also going across. So in this last study, which I'm concluding and ending with up, it is depending. So here they are of vestibular rehabilitation. He is a footballer, she is a footballer, an ankle sprain along with the low back pain and everything. And they could all do the session together. And IG was done together in a warm environment. And a balance was focused on more as well as the strengthening. So I'm glad we have Gianni sir over here and he will be speaking about Vatsu because I learned Vatsu from him and even with the other Vatsu teachers and it was very helpful for me to do my physiotherapy because uh, practices and as well as for the patient because it doesn't put many pressure and I don't have to do a lot of manual therapy with my hands inside in the water easily with the water properties I was able to stretch them out to improve the range as well as to go for an entire body stretching and flexibility to achieve with the fascia release so I conclude my slide over here these are my book references and these are my article references I am thank you very much SIP, Society of Assistant Physiotherapist and Ashramam, and even allowing me to share my details up over here. Thank you very much. I said we are running a little late, so I'll introduce Gianni Sir. Yes. Uh, Gianni Sir is the founder of Fatsu, as you heard. Prachi speak, he has practiced for over 30 years and travels worldwide to teach and train. He's an aquatic sport professor and a Swiss Olympic adult pedagogy teacher. Welcome, Gianni, sir. He needs to mute his... Gianni, sir, you need to mute your... We uh, voice. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hello to everyone. Thank you to give me the opportunity to uh, share uh, with all uh, you, all, all of you, uh, this uh, benefit of uh, aquatic bodywork and especially Watsu on this uh, webinar event. I was uh, bringing Watsu in in India 20, 20 years ago. And uh, uh, it's uh, one amazing technique that you can uh, use to uh, prepare uh, the body uh, to every kind of uh, other kind of uh, therapy. Uh, essentially, Watsu is related uh, to uh, a work on symptom and not on causes. But of course, I can combine uh, uh, the different approach uh, with also different therapists and uh, achieve my goals. Uh, I would like to uh, give a look now to the video. Watsu or water shiatsu is a pioneering and phenomenally growing form of aquatic bodywork that began in 1980 when Harold Dahl started applying the stretches of Zen Shiatsu while floating people in the warm pool at Northern California's Harbin Hot Springs. In the years since, with the help of students, 
other instructors and professionals from related fields in countless classes, spas, and clinics around the world, Watsu has evolved into what many believe is the most significant advance in bodywork in our times. While virtually every other modality uses touch to connect the practitioner with a client, Watsu allows for a significantly deeper connection through the holding that working in water necessitates. The practitioner cradles the client in his or her arms and creates a physical and emotional environment of total safety and trust. With that trust as a framework, the closeness of the person-to-person -person contact combines with the deeply relaxing effects of warm water, the freedom it gives the spine, and the therapeutic nature of Watsu's moves and stretches. The result is a bodywork modality of extraordinary depth which can have both specific therapeutic results and profound healing on many levels of a person's being. Besides finding countless applications in therapy and in spas around the world, Watsu is bringing new connection into the lives of many who are sharing its simpler moves with family and friends. In a typical session, harmonizing the receiver and giver's breathing with each stretch and the gentle rising and falling of the body in water leads into deeper and deeper levels of relaxation. Moments of stillness alternate with moves that free the body in ways impossible on land. The experienced Watsu practitioner chooses from a wide range of positions and proven sequences those that will be the most effective and appropriate. At the same time, he or she listens for and follows whatever tendencies to move arise from within the receiver, welcoming each opportunity to move into a creative free flow. Typically, at the end of a session, no matter how much might have been encountered and let go during the session, the receiver feels a deep and extremely satisfying sense of completion. So what we have to remember is that essentially Watsu is uh, working on the symptom, uh, increasing a lot the range of movement. But it can be applied to every uh, age. So I was uh, bringing uh, Watsu to the babies. Um, also, with uh, my experience here in Tamil Nadu, with the Shantala uh, mass Ayurvedic massage for baby, uh, we are applying uh, around the same uh, principle uh, to have a good connection between parent and uh, the little baby that will improve uh, uh, life uh, um, quality further. We know that the quality of the relationship in the first uh, months of uh, living is the most important. Then we um, transfer the benefit of uh, Watsu also uh, du during pregnancy. Um, during pregnancy, we, we can have some uh, issue, especially on the lower back, and uh, some move that uh, Watsu is providing and uh, buoyancy, uh, the loss of the weight that uh, we have on that situation is giving a strong release on the lower back. Uh, beside this, uh, we can keep some uh, um, better uh, flexibility and some better uh, uh, balance between the um, skeletal and muscular system. Beside this, uh, I, we have to remember that uh, uh, pressing uh, acupressure uh, point, uh, stretching uh, meridians or, or nadi, uh, doing uh, um, water movement, all this is cumulative at the same time by the same uh, technique. So what make it, what's so different towards other uh, uh, is this cumulative effect that you can Use also, like I did here in, in the video, it's not uh, the best quality, but uh, you will understand that I'm working with uh, cerebral palsy uh, uh, CP uh, child and their uh, mom, uh, instructing them how they can uh, use the water to, uh, rel to release uh, spasticity. This was around uh, 20 years ago.
the quality of the water is uh, also allowing us to release the structure of the joint in uh, uh, increasing the range of movement and uh, this give us the possibility to bring also children little by little to have uh, also an uh, orthostatic uh, um, pleasure uh, and to this is a cp uh, child uh, to have the possibility to feel this uh, vertical uh, uh, orthostatic lead uh, so it's a little different than a regular massage i feel relaxed but i i don't feel tired you know there's a sense of energy this pool here that the marsh has is pretty unique and i, I think the ability to offer watsu is pretty unique too I think the people that would benefit the most from aquatic body work are those people that have any type of, um, I'm going to say holistic issues around physical discomfort, chronic pain, um, anybody with any type of uh, rehabilitative situation going on, post-surgery, pre-surgery, leading up to a surgery, that would benefit from their musculoskeletal system just getting the reprieve. Yes, and uh, what uh, was not mentioned until now is that uh, in warm water, especially in warm water, not only, but especially in warm water, uh, after 20-25 minutes, you uh, decrease uh, the basic muscular tonus. And this is the reason because it's so effective. And uh, Watsu is increasing uh, that uh, property so that at the end you have a really better uh, uh, range uh, of movement on, uh, on, on the joint and you will get also more uh, flexibility in the muscle. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Aisha, unmute your voice. Yes. Thank you so much for this lovely webinar. I mean, we are definitely running out of time. So I'm just going to ask one or two questions to Deepthi and one or two questions to Prachi. Deepthi, your question first. Uh, what are the precautions that you need to be very careful when you mm -hmm. treat children with epilepsy? Uh, okay. So first of all, whenever the child, whenever the child who has a continuous epilepsy, it's completely contraindicated. But the person who have who has an epilepsy and he's on a medication, you can take that child to the water. Uh, but you need to take precautions that if the child gets an epilepsy during the intervention, you need to take the child at the age of the pool, wait for his epileptic attack to subside, call for the help, and then take the child or the person out of the pool. Thank you, Deepthi. And one last question. Mm -hmm. Do you take children who have subluxations at the hip joint or even somebody who's got dyskinetic cerebral palsy, a shoulder joint, into for athletic yeah. therapy? Okay. So uh, we can take those children, uh, but then uh, as we know that the hydrostatic pressure, which gives a cushioning effect to the joint. So that's not a uh, complete contraindication, but then uh, you have to, whenever you are doing in the, whenever you are doing any treatment uh, with him, you have to be very slow. The intensity of your movement should be very slow. Speed of the movement should be controlled and allow the child to do a very minimal movement in the water. And that's how we can uh, support the child with the subluxation of the hip Thank joint you. or the shoulder. Thank you so much, Deepthi. Prachi? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. There are questions to you. How does aquatic therapy help you in improving balance? Okay, uh, so in improving balance, that's what we were running with the time. So the last poll just went off. The proprioception. So balance is always challenging when you're inside in the water with viscosity, turbulence, which are acting continuously. Now over here, we, even the proprioceptors, they say that proprioception is decreased because of buoyancy. But there is a lot of resistance required to cut through the currents as well inside in the water. So a somatosensory inputs are always working more maximal comparable to land and as well as the Kolke tendon reflex is working more much more stimulation. 
So there is where your proprioceptors are working, your core muscle strengthening is happening. And most beneficial, it's like inside in the water, you don't have fear of fall and you can sustain for a longer period of time. So this is how even it improves in balance training. And one last question. How often does we need to do aquatic therapy treatment? Okay. So it depends again on the condition. Uh, from but you don't have to definitely do more than three sessions in a week but one session in a week also it is fine because after all as I mentioned we are not amphibians and we need to transition on the land so this can be used as an adjunct to the physiotherapy. I think so on behalf of my president's retreat and all the founder members of Society of Indian Physiotherapists we thank everyone for this lovely webinar and we also thank all the viewers for always being present for our seminar thank you everybody thank you once again i would i would also like to extend my gratitude to asha who was a mentor in my pediatric career so thank you asha for inviting me for this webinar and give me this opportunity and thank you all thank you prachi thank you jiani sir and all the srp organizers thank you everyone Thank you. Bye. Safe, all of you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. It's not clear, Nitesh. Huh? Say. Hey, spare off. <laughs>